Hey, hey y'all. y'all! And welcome to the Sorry Not Sorry Generation podcast, where we bring you a not so healthy dose of humor and reality as we get our hands dirty with some serious nostalgia and question everything. Let's dive in. Hey, hey y'all. y'all! It's Misty. It's Ani. Today we are recording my birthday, birthday episode. episode. Woo! I am officially thir- turning 32, and which is funny to me in, and to my mom, because that is the same age when she had me, and we are at very different life stages <laughs> at the age of 32. So it is a little funny. So when my mom was 32, she had a child. When I turned 32, I'm going to play Harry Potter trivia. <laughs> <So> <laughs> a little different. So, you know. But today, that is what we are doing. We are playing Harry Potter trivia. And to be fair, in the past, when we've done trivia, especially when it comes to Disney trivia, we have put Ani to the test. And to be fair, she usually steps it up pretty hard, especially when it comes to that Disney stuff. The girl knows her stuff. I try. This this time around, and you're very good at it, this time around... We are flipping the script a little, and Ani will be asking me Harry Potter trivia questions. I will preface this by saying I am a massive Harry Potter fan. I'm not entirely certain I can still differentiate between canon and fan fiction. Because of all the fan fiction you read? I've been reading Harry Potter fan fiction for 15 years. (laughs) I might remember what the books have in them, if I'm being honest. Like, let's, let's be really, really real here. I think I've read... I've... The first books... Like once, and then five, six, and seven, I've read like two or three times. But specifically, I've read five and six the most. But uh, 15 I've years read, of fan fiction, guys. I've read the fourth one the most. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna preface that by saying, look, if I say something that isn't canon, it's, it's probably because I read it, cons- it's, it's a fanon instead. It might be a fanon. Yeah, I promise none of my answers will be, you know, how Snape is Harry's dad or (laughs) James Potter and Regulus ship, which is like recently risen up lately. So which to be fair, the fix word are really good. I will give it that. So really James and Regulus. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's I, I was very surprised and I had only come across it. I came across it for the first time like a couple years ago. Because I can totally many... see the, I can totally see James and Sirius ship. Well, the Sirius ship, his number one ship, and the no, the number one ship in the fandom is Sirius and Remus. It's the Wolf Star ship. Aww. It is the dominating ship in the world of Harry Potter. Remus and, and Sirius, hands down, amazing fan fiction. Amazing fan fiction. Top tier absolutely love everything about it whether they're doing like modern AUs or like just going through the Marauders years it's fantastic it's absolutely some of the best fan fiction I've ever read but that is the number one Harry Potter ship the number two and three spot belong to Germione and then Harry and Draco and which one is the top one depends on what website you're on because if you're on fanfiction.net it's going to be Drury which is Draco and Harry if you are on or most other... Well, if you're on AO3, it's Wolfstar. And then consistently on both sides, Germany is number two. Yeah, look, if anybody ever wants to challenge my knowledge of fan fiction, I am here for you. I know everything at this point. So, I... You also, I, when you read, you tend to... I don't know if it's because of all these years of schooling and researching, but like when you read something, you can catch on to plot twists... Not just plot twists, but like Easter eggs, yeah. very quickly. And yeah. I, I, I don't. When I read, I'm like hit like from the left side. I get hit on the left by a truck. You know, <laughs> when I get to like a plot, I'm like, oh my god! And you're yeah. just like, oh, I see this and this and this. And within the first five shots, I'm like, how? Yeah. Like when you throw do... me and Aaron things that you yeah. think are gonna happen or that are relevant in the Sarah J. Moss series, I'm just like, uh-huh. I can't say much. It's because it's either going to be a, you're 100% on point or you're 95% on point or you're completely wrong. But I'm just like, 
How do I do you, love how throwing do you my these? unhinged ones. <laughs> I'm like, how do you I, see these? I think it, like, I, I will agree that I do think a large part of it, or at least a, a good part of it, comes from just years and years and years of, like, writing papers and doing research over and over and over again. But my mom and I watch a shit ton of crime shows, and this is what her and I do when we watch them. We'll just look at each other and be like, well, who do you think it is? And then we'll just go off on why we think it's this person. And she is far more accurate than I am. And because she watches way more crime shows than I do. But she, I want to watch crime shows with your mom. That's yeah, fun. Like, she's very accurate with it. But we, like, that's just something her and I do when we watch crime shows and stuff like that. Just kind of, like, going down that, that rabbit hole of debating, like, why is it this way? Like, what are they doing? You know, why, you know, and just... Yeah, like I, I also enjoy trying to connect those dots. It, in some ways, sometimes I irritate myself, and I'm just be like, especially when it, I think it's one of the things that drives me nuts about like Crescent City and some of the longer books is that I figured out the plot twist 400 pages ago, and I am annoyed that it took 400 pages to get to a <laughs> plot twist I knew was coming. And I think that's one of the things that annoys me, and I'm just like. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of build-up. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I figured that out, like, on page 192. Like, let's fucking go. Like, let's just skip past all of this shit. Like, how early... And I don't, and I'm just like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? And then it hits me, I'm like, oh my god! Well, how early in the series did I text you and Aaron when I was first reading the first Crescent City book, that I thought the Archangel was evil? Like, it was really early on. Like, when, when I thought McKay or whatever his Micah. name was. Micah. There you go. When I thought he was evil, I think I was, like, five, six chapters into that. And I'm like, this guy seems like he's evil. And I'm just, because I thought he was evil. And guess what? He's fucking evil. So, that was just, that was I was on things. the fence about Micah. I was like, yeah. I don't trust. Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. Well, but and, like, I'm the sus. middle part of the book builds, like, the idea that he could be trustworthy. Yeah. But, like, my first instinct was, okay, well, he's evil. And then he, yeah, and it's just like, yeah, it was just my first thought, like, well, he's evil. There you go. Yeah. And it's just like, okay. And, like, and then I do enjoy, however, and it's something I, I, I do like about, like, bookstagram and book talk and stuff like that, is listening to people's super unhinged theories. Uh, yes. Because I enjoy the super unhinged theories. And, like, kind of just, like, diving into that. You haven't and read the Throne of Glass series for me to tell you about one of the th- uh, theories regarding the serial. Yeah. I, I see. Now, some of the things I do come across online, and I've, ha- I've heard a couple of theories about, like, the serial, the serial and all that. But it, then sometimes I'll be reading it, and I'll be like, and I'm aware as I'm reading it, like, I'm missing something. And I think it's because, like, I haven't read Throne of Glass. And that's why that one time I texted you guys, like, isn't there, like, a stag, like, a white stag in the Throne of Glass series or something? Like, I'm yeah. missing something here, and I don't know what it is because I haven't read everything yet, so. But. Yeah. And I'm, like, I've been, I've been watching, like, so many theory videos, and, like, I love doing that. So. All right. Harry Potter trivia for your birthday. Yes. Yes. Hey, look, it's my birthday episode. If I want to fucking talk about book theories we can we really can we can just switch it over to book theories this is whatever the fuck (laughs) i want it to be and we're just we're gonna talk we're gonna uh, do harry potter trivia as well and which is great but also more book theories also more, more book theories but at the same time again i will state for the record that if i get something wrong and it turns out that it's fan fiction lore instead Wah. I don't apologize. I've been reading fan fiction for 18, 17, 18 years now. Wah. I could have several degrees in it. I have been reading fan fiction longer than some teenagers have been alive. Like when we met with Jessica and you guys were talking about how long we'd, her and I had been reading fan fiction. And, and you mentioned that you thought she had been reading fan fiction as long as I have. And then you talked about the start of One Direction. I'm like, I don't know the year One Direction started, but I know I was definitely reading fan fiction before <laughs> One Direction was a band. <laughs> I know I've been reading fan fiction that long that they were not a band yet. So That's fair. 
That's fair. So, like I have um, a distinct recollection of reading fan fiction on a website that no longer exists. <laughs> That's how long it's been. <laughs> all right, Ani. Hit me with some of that Harry Potter trivia. What, what you all got? Right. What you got? What do I got? How do Lily and Snape meet for the first time? I believe they were neighbors. Mm-hmm. And they were playing like in a field, I think Lily and her sister were. And Lily was doing magic. And yes. Snape saw her. They were in the same town. Yeah. How many Horcruxes did Voldemort create intentionally? Six, because there was only one he created unintentionally. Yes. That, that's... All right. What's the primary ingredient of Polyjuice Potion? The hair of somebody else? <laughs> oh, I mean, this one should be easy, but... What is the correct birth order of the Weasley children? Oh, okay. That would be Bill, Charlie, Percy... Fred and George, Ron and Jenny. Yes. The uh, only thing I could have fucked up would it be George and Fred instead of Fred and George. <laughs> but considering they always say Fred and George, I assume it's Fred and George. It's, it says Fred and George, so we're going to go with that. What is Voldemort's mother's name? Oh, it's something stupid that doesn't look like a word. <laughs> Melop. Mel, it's got a P in it, and it starts with an M, and it has P-E, I think, at the end. Melop. Mel, Meloop. Trollop, Marl, Mar, Marop, Marp, Moop, Mop. <laughs> Mor- not a mop. You're close. <laughs> Morpy. Okay, what's the last name? <laughs> what's her last name? Her original last name, I believe, is Gaunt. Yes. Gaunt, yeah. Her name is Marope. P. Marope. Whatever. See, I was really fucking close. Marope. If, I think somewhere in that word combination scro- Scrabble game, I said that. Yeah. Alright, what is the name of the popular wizarding newspaper based in London? The world's worst trash article? The Rita Skeeter's Dumping Ground. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they call it the Daily Prophet, but it's the fucking trash tabloid of the wizarding world. I'm going to write that down because I like, <laughs> I like that. Rita Skeeter's, Rita Skeeter's Dumping, dumping ground. ground. What kind of wood is Harry's first wand made out of? It's, I should know this. He and I have the same birthday wand. Phoenix, Feather, Core, and Holly. Yes. Yeah. Who wrote A History of Magic? Mathilda Bagshot. Oh, that's too easy. Uh, what fake name does Harry use while attending Bill and Fleur's wedding in disguise? That was something stupid. I don't know, actually. I don't remember. I don't remember the wedding scene all that well. Think of a giant purple dinosaur. See, I told you it was stupid. It's Barney something. It's Barney Weasley. Is it Barney Weasley? I see. It was something <laughs> stupid. I knew it was something stupid. I just kept thinking to myself, it's something stupid sounding. I know that. <laughs> All right. In The Prisoner of Azkaban, whose portrait replaces the fat lady after she is attacked? Whose portrait? I remember she was attacked. Think Monty Python esque. So that would work if I had seen Monty Python. God. But isn't it Sir Cadians or something? Cadigan. Painting? Yes. Cadigan. It's like, yes. I was just thinking to myself, oh, it's a knight. It's a knight. What the fuck is his name? What are the employees of the Department of Mysteries called? Um, unspeakables. Yeah, I would not have remembered that. Uh, I've read a lot of fan fictions where Hermione becomes an unspeakable after she graduates. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's easy. What year was the Goblet of Fire published? Ooh, 2002. I honestly have no idea. Oh, so close. 2000. What is it? 2000. Okay. It was just shot in the dark, and I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) What magical creature is known for guarding Gringotts Bank? Dragons. Yes, but which type of dragon? Angry, blind, white (laughs) albino dragon. No, I need an actual specific type. Like, we know Norman is a Norwegian Ridgeback. What is the Green Goth Dragon? I mean, I can name different types of dragons, but I don't necessarily think it's a Hungarian Horntail. No, it's not. But you're... Think that part of the world. Currently in war. 
Is it a Ukrainian iron belly? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten without the Ukrainian part. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Where did Hermione hold the first meeting for students interested in joining Dumbledore's army? Oh, that stupid ass creepy bar. Yeah. Like the world's dumbest place to hold a fucking secret meeting in an open space full of a bunch of people that can come and go. Like, well, girl. No, see. Okay, it's what's the name of the place? Give me that one, and then I'll I'll continue my rant. I, I it's it's I know it's not the Hog's Head though. It is the Hog's Head. Is it? I thought that was the name of the one in Hogsmeade, the good one. No, that's the Three Broomsticks. Oh yeah, yeah. See, if if Hermione had held the meeting in the Three Broomsticks, it would have been fine because it's such a popular place. It's so or loud. You could have just fucking held it in the fucking forest or off to the side. I mean, of the road. yes, that too. But or like thinking like of in the-, the shrieking shack or <laughs> literally anywhere else. It's true, but I mean, if she had done it at the Three Broomsticks, it wouldn't have been so suspicious because like. Everyone goes into the three broomsticks. Everyone's there. People are always there talking, drinking, whatever. But if you go to the hog's head and you have a bunch of kids sitting there whispering and doing things, it's like, that's us. Especially with how public, like how obvious it looked in the movie. <laughs> Is they're all just cradled around my, like the trio stand at the front, like they're making a fucking PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. Like, wow. That's true. All right, what does Hagrid... Really, there was not a Slytherin in the bunch. <laughs> no, they're all Gryffindor. Some Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, but mostly Gryffindor. Mm. What does Hagrid use to channel the pieces of his wand once it's been broken? An umbrella. Yes. Mm. Uh, which pub in London conceals the entrance to Diagon Alley? The Leaky Cauldron. Yes. Was it you or someone else that... Or I just saw it. It was a theory about Crookshanks and Worm and Pettigrew. What kind of theory? I've read theories that Crookshanks knew who Pettigrew was. Yes, something like that. I've like, read theories that Crookshanks was Regulus's familiar and knew who Pettigrew was. Oh, I didn't know about the Regulus one. Mm-hmm. But no, I did. Regulus is his star represents the constellation of leo oh. and because of crook and then there's cook shanks he's like this orange cat and everything like that so and hermione got him from the pet shop right mm-hmm. yeah but he wasn't i believe it's mentioned at some point that he came to the pet shop as an adult and like he wasn't a kitten like raised there right i believe i don't know if that's fanon or not but i believe that was mentioned at some point that's fair Okay. Hmm. Kind of easy, but whatever. What eavesdropping tool did Fred and George invent in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix? The extendable ears. Yes. Who's Whenever Slytherin? you say this is going to be easy, it makes me worried because I'm like, oh god. <laughs> no. Who is the Slytherin ghost? The Bloody Baron. I sometimes call him Captain Hook. That's fair. I love that what the Bloody Baron and the Grey Ghost were our lovers. The Grey Lady? The Grey Lady, yeah. Didn't he, like, try to kill her or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, me neither. I don't know the ghost lore all that well. What is the name of the couple that attends dinner at the Dursleys when Dobby shows up to stop Harry from returning to Hogwarts? The Grunnings? No. That's the name of his drill company, I think. I don't know. The Masons. The Masons. Yeah, no, I never would have guessed that. What does Harry name his children? First and middle names. <laughs> James Sirius Potter, Lily Luna, huh? and a name that is really just on par with Renesme in Albus Severus Potter, which could have literally just been anyone else. <laughs> it is on par with Renesme. It is the <laughs> stupidest fucking name. You could have named him literally anything else. You could have named him Regulus. You could have named him Fred. You could have named him Remus. You could have named him Hagrid. You could have named him fucking... Fluffy? Honestly, you could have... Norbert? 
Norbert, you could have you could have named him after a fucking rock. You could have named him Ethiosaurus for all I care. <laughs> I don't care. But Albus Severus, you named your child after the two most manipulative and terrible people in your <laughs> life, Harry. In your life. You could have named him fucking Fleamont after your grandfather. I don't care. Could have named him Dudley. Have... Or Vernon. Uh, Honestly, you could have named him anything and it would have been better than fucking Aldous Severus Potter. You were named after the two greatest. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. I know. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Could have fucking named him Lucius of Malfoy Jr. <laughs> and it would have been better. <laughs> you know what? He should have done that. He should have named him Lucius Malfoy Jr. And just confused the wizarding world as a whole. Lucius Draconius butter it's just like and there has to be a you know his name is lucius malfoy jr potter in that order <laughs> so that malfoy and jr are his middle names <laughs> just just confuse the whole fucking make draco question whether or not harry was having an affair with his dad just <laughs> a little seed in there just a little bit <laughs> make people question everything for a moment all right where would you look for to find a bezoar miss davis in a goat stomach yes in the book version of harry potter and the sorcerer's stone what is the name of dudley's friend who goes to the zoo with the dursleys and harry i would not have remembered this why does alex come to mind (laughs) i don't think that's right Something British. Something some British sounding. It's not Henry. It's Will. No, it is what Pierce. Is it? Pierce. Yeah, something stupid British sounding. Yeah. What type of animal? I mean, I need specific type. Does Harry accidentally set free when they're at the zoo? It's a python. No. Boa constrictor. Yes. It's a big snake. <laughs> big snake. It was a big snake. There's there. I had two options: big snake one, big snake two. There are bigger, aka reticulated pythons and anacondas, that are bigger. Anyways, yeah. uh, what is Voldemort's real name? Tom Marvolio Riddle. I guess it's never Marvolo. It's not Marvolio. Marvolo Riddle. I don't think he's ever referred to as Thomas. It's just Tom. Like, when he writes out his name in the Chamber of Secrets, I think it just says Tom. Yeah, it just says Tom. Tom Marvolo Riddle. Unless we're going with the French version, then it's Tom Elvis Riddle. Elvis? Why Elvis? Because when you translate the book, his name has to spell out, I am Lord Voldemort. So you need the letters, and so most countries have his name as something different every time. Gotcha. What year was The Prisoner of Azkaban published? 1999. Yes. I, we had a question about the other one, the Goblet of Fire, and that was 2000, so I'm like, let's just take it back a year, I guess. So. What does the boggart turn into when Mrs. Weasley sees it? Her dead kids. Yeah. Her whole family. I, I alter it to say the whole family because I don't recall whether or not Arthur was in that, but I know it was her children. Her entire family and Harry. Mm-hmm. Since Harry's a son. In the book version of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, who finds Harry on the Hogwarts Express after Malfoy breaks his nose and leaves him under the invisibility cloak? Luna. No, in the books. Oh. I was like, I remember that scene. <laughs> I watched that scene. Thank you. In the, was it Neville? No. Somebody unexpected. Someone think it's Ron and Hermione. Mm. Older. They're part of the... By the time that happens, Fred and George aren't there. It, they are part of the order. Oh, it's Tonks. Yeah, it's Tonks. I kept thinking of students because they're at Hogwarts, and I'm like... Mm-hmm. Uh, how was Hermione able to take extra lessons in Prisoner of Azkaban? Time turner. <sighs> Who is magically manipulated into vandalizing Hogwarts with messages, with messages about the Chamber of Secrets? Jenny. Mm-hmm. And what is Ron famously afraid of? Women spiders. <laughs> no, I feel like it's, it's, faints when he asks Flor Delacour out. So true, but I think he's really just afraid of Hermione. 
No, I think he's afraid of women. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I think he's afraid of women. I think they scare him. It's like the unknown. <laughs> What's the name of Hagrid's half brother? Because that's the full giant. I can picture Hagrid saying his name too. It sounds more like a sound than it does a name. Yeah. I keep wanting to say Grog. That's the wrong fucking show. I mean, you're close. <laughs> yeah, it's something along those lines. It's I keep cycling through G names that I know. And I've got Grog on one hand and Garp on the other. Those are two different shows. <laughs> okay, combine those two. Gorp? Close! Change the, the, it's Grop. Grop, okay. Okay. I was I was closer than I expected to be, to be fair. Yes, yes, you were. What is Hermione's Patronus? It's an otter. Hmm. Mine is a white ferret. Mine is a robin. Don't you not like birds? I don't have any issues with birds. No. Oh. It's reptiles I don't like. Oh. Let's see. I like the fact that it was a robin because I really like the character robin. From the Batman universes. I like all uh-huh. of the Robins. So I was okay. very excited that it was a Robin. Okay. Also, it means that my Animagus form would also be a Robin. So well, I, I guess that means that. my Animagus would be a, a white fairy. <laughs> yeah, I do the mm-hmm. war dance. What is the name of the Weasley Twins magic joke shop? Weasley's Wizards Wheezes, I believe. Yes. Stop moving. Uh, what did Harry do that got him temporarily expelled from Hogwarts? Cast underage magic. Your answer is technically correct. While the the trivia says he chased away the mentors, like no, he used magic by using uh, underage ma- magic. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, he chased away the mentors using it. It's not like he went in fisticuffs with the fucking dementors. I also just forgot that I just realized that Draco is also a white ferret. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I that's what he was turned into Two. by Moody. Like I don't know Marty if that would be his Patronus, but if it is his Patronus, that means you and Draco would be soulmates. So I'll take that. <laughs> When's Harry's birthday? <gasps> oh, jeez, I don't know. <laughs> I think it could be July thirty first. How did you know? Oh, it's almost like we share a birthday or something. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> what is the name of Hagrid's boarhound dog? That's completely useless. Fang. Fine. Then we take Fang. Fine. It's useless. <laughs> Just love what Hagrid says. They're like, fine, take him. He's of no use. He's like, you're going to have to protect him, not the other way around. <laughs> Uh, what year do Hogwarts students take their owls? Fifth. Yes. Who sent Harry his firebolt? Which did he have first? The Nimbus 2000 or the firebolt? Because one of them is McGonagall in the other one series. I'm going to guess the firebolt was McGonagall. All the way no, around. the other way around. The firebolt is serious and the Nimbus 2000 is McGonagall. Because think, he got his first broom in the first movie. And then the second one, when they're going to practice, he's like, we have a new team member, a new seeker, and we have the Nimbus 2001s. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got the firebolt. Yeah. Oh. You are correct. This, this is Honestly, the Nimbus 2001s looked the coolest. So. <laughs> I love the firebolt. Like Draco's broom. Cool. Yeah. I thought yeah. the firebolt was, was pretty also- cool. Yeah, I mean, I what I would like is a full size version, and they don't yeah. really sell those. So, like a nice full size version. I've seen kids versions, like kid toy versions. But I'm like, I'd oh, also I'm like cool. one that actually flies. Well, that too. Like, if anybody <laughs> knows where we can purchase one of those things, we'll start pooling some resources. But until then, <laughs> all right. The sad question: Which Weasley dies during the final battle of Hogwarts? Fred. Poor my Fred. Fa- my favorite. I don't know why, I but know. I love Fred. I, like I, he's the favorite twin, and I don't know why. I can't tell you why. Like there is no logical reason why he is my favorite twin, but he is. I posted that question on Reddit once, and like the the, the answers were ridiculous. They're just like because Fred is the one that died. I'm like that doesn't answer my question. 
But he was the favorite before he died because I remember sitting there reading it and like, no, my favorite Weasley twin is dead. And I'm like, wait, why do I have a favorite Weasley twin? He was the favorite first. I, I don't know why either. And I'm just like, it's, your people aren't answering my question. Have you ever heard the theory that J.K. Rowling's original pairing for Hermione was Fred? Really? Because she wanted, yeah, she wanted to recreate the James and Lily situation and it would have been with fred and hermione and it's actually a really good fucking ship i read a lot of fred and hermione fan fictions and it's I, really good like there's so much natural chemistry that is really good oh yeah oh yeah. yeah i can totally see that that would be a lot of flirting yeah it was fred. it's very good like the the fan fiction sport are top tier okay what magazine does xenophilius lovegood publish the quibbler yes i love every time i read that name i'm just like i know exactly how to say that and if anyone else looked at it they'd be like what the fuck how do i pronounce that you reading it for the first time and you're just like the what <laughs> <laughs> publish the what and now you see all the okay. letters together and you're like i know that name mm-hmm. what is the Absolutely. address you're just kind of like right i got it What's the address of the Black family home? Number 12 Grimmauld Street. Grimmauld Place. Yes. Who anonymously sends Harry his father's invisibility cloak on Christmas because he never Dumbledore. gave it back? Yeah. Dumbledore. <laughs> I added that last part because he never gave it back. He didn't. Hi, can he I borrow fucking, this? He fucking kept it and if James and Lily had had it the night that Voldemort attacked, Lily and Harry, like Lily might still be alive. <laughs> so. You never know. What is the animal symbol of Ravenclaw? This 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 sounds wrong. It's a hawk. It's an eagle. It's an eagle. I knew it wasn't a raven. I'm stupid because I'm just like, eh, it should be a raven. I knew it wasn't a, a raven, but I couldn't remember what it was. So, eagle makes sense. But uh, also, the colors for the for the house are different in the books versus the movie too. So. Really? Oh, because Ravenclaw would be blue and bronze, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, not silver. And then, yeah, in the movie, it's silver, which would make Slytherin and Ravenclaw have the same secondary color. And they do not, because it's bronze. I don't know why they decided so to what? make the change. That's pretty so stupid. What's Hufflepuff? Black and just black and yellow? Yellow and black, yeah. Okay. What was the name of Hagrid's pet dragon? Norbert. Mm. Oh, bless him. He loves his mummy. <laughs> what? Potion gives good luck to those who drink it. He likes Village cheese. And if I was ever going to have any actual potion in real life, it would be that one. Because I would drink it and then I would go play the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> multiple, multiple, lottery. Lo- multiple lotteries and be like, I win! <laughs> I win them all. And then I'd be investigated for lottery fraud when I win them all. It's like, I was just feeling lucky, man. I don't know. And the best part would be that Felix Felicis would not come up on a talk screen. That's true. That's very true. People would honestly, just by the behavior, would probably just think you're a little high on, like, weed or something. Or Take a drug test. Mushrooms. Okay. Sure. Nothing comes out. Like, it's like, I'm on nothing, bro. Like, I'm just feeling good. I'm having a good and, day. And, like, by the time, like, it wears off pretty quickly. Like, by the time, like, you got to that point, you would just be like, yeah, there ain't nothing here, my dude. <laughs> so. Uh... Which bitch kills Dobby? Bellatrix Lestrange. <sighs> ah. What is the maiden name of Lily and Petunia? Evans. Yes. And I'm like, oh, I know this. But I had I honestly had to stop and think about the fan fictions and like list and like reading Lily's name. <laughs> and I'm just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Who is not in Slytherin? Pansy Parkinson, Blaze Zabini, Lavender Brown, or Gregory Goyle? Lavender. I love how Goyle goes from being white and fat to skinny and black in the movies. That's because the black guy is Blaze Zabini. Don't they call him Goyle? They better not because that's Blaze Zabini. What? <laughs> I could have sworn they called him Goyle. I must, I must know. This is... Part two? I'll just do part two. I must know. He's uh, also in the sixth movie. 
99 plus cast members. It's a lot of people. Why don't you just Google Harry Potter Blaze Zabini actor? Oh, wow, yeah. So which one? So in the books, it's when they're in the Room of Requirement, it's Crab and Goyle. Yeah. In the movie, it's Blaze and Goyle, like Goyle or something like that. Or crab. that oh. I think it's Crab because I think Crab's the one that dies. Interesting. Oh. Yeah, all right. Sorry. I thought they just, maybe they just thought that like only introducing Zabini once in like one, maybe two scenes in the sixth book and then never having him show up again was weird. So, <laughs> what? There was day? also a lot of controversy when the books came out is because Blaze Zabini was never referred to originally. I think Blaze is originally in the fifth book. In the fifth book, Blaze is never referred to with any gender pronouns. So there was a huge debate online for a really long time thinking that Blaze was a woman. Oh. And they were kind of hoping that that was going to be Draco's actual love interest. Because at the time, if you're excluding Hermione, the Slytherin love interest was Pansy. Ed Parkins. Yeah. And nobody was interested in that. Nobody so interested they were about hoping Pansy. Blaze and that Blaze was a woman. And it wasn't until huh. the next book came around that they referred to Blaze as a man, they realized. Interesting. That- Blaze is a dude, so and I believe Italian. <laughs> what day did James and Lily die? Halloween. Yep. What house is Justin Finch Fletchley in? <laughs> Justin Finch Fletchley is a is a Hufflepuff, I believe. Yes. What children's book contains a story of the Deathly Hollows? If I had yet to read. Heart. Yeah. I honestly don't have any desire to read any of those little off stories. Books. I have it. I just haven't yeah. read it yet. And I'm just like, meh. I saw the really cool shadow puppet story of it. Like, I'm good. When is Neville's birthday? July 30th. What kind of magical creature is Aragog? Giant creepy creepy spider. Yeah, but what are they called? My worst nightmare? <laughs> um, Tarantulazilla? The dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Arachnomagus. Horror from the deep. Uh, starts with an A, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I know it's an A, and I know it should mean the word spider, but and it's not arachnomantula. It's a ra- acromantula. Yeah. Acromantula. Okay. And I'm like, I would know it 100% if I saw it written down. How is the Grey Lady related to Rowena Ravenclaw? It's her daughter. Mm-hmm. What name does Buckbeak get after being saved from execution? Oh, that's right, because Sirius names him something else. Was it Sirius who named him something else, or was it Hagrid? No. It's either Sirius or Hermione. I think it was Sirius. I think it was in a fan fiction I read that they just renamed Buckbeak and reintroduced him to the group because he's a fucking, like... He's a hippogriff, and the ma- and like the people from the Ministry of Magic can't fucking identify the different hippogriffs <laughs> because there's so many. So they just reintroduced him to the herd, and they're like, "That's just another hippogriff. His name is like Fluffy or whatever." <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. I I definitely remember reading that at some point, and I thought it was really funny because just like, yeah, you know what? That's a really good point. Because what are you gonna do? Get a magical creature expert? You are standing in front of the magical creature expert. His name is Hagrid, right? It's Um, like they all look the same. You know, I don't remember what Sirius called Buckbeak afterwards. Wither wings. It's a weird name. It's really stupid and makes the bird sound ill. So, (laughs) what is Dean Thomas's favorite sport? Soccer. Yes. How do you know all this? <laughs> 17 all right. years of reading fan fiction. All right. Who are the chasers on the Gryffindor Quidditch team when Harry joins? The chasers. I started saying Fred and George. I'm pretty sure they're the beaters. They are the beaters. Because, come on, you're going to give Fred and George fucking bludgers and just be like, ha, ha, ha. It's the, it's the women. Yeah. Alicia and Katie. One more. Oh, there's three. Shit. Alicia, Katie, Angelica? Mm, close, but no. Can, can you give me their last names? Katie Bell. Angela. It's Angela, not Angelica. Katie Bell, Angela. I can't think of a last name besides from the office. 
Because <laughs> there's a character named Angela. Angela. I don't know the other two ladies' last names. Angela Should. Johnson and Alicia Spinett. Yeah. I always forget that Katie's one of them. But, like, I always remember Angela for some reason. Yeah. Uh, who is the first person to ever successfully break into Green that would have been... Oh, that had to be Coral, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's got Voldemort on his back. Yeah. What does Harry do with his winnings from the Triwizard Tournament? He gives them to Fred and George. On the stipulation that they buy Ron new dress robes. <laughs> do whatever you want with this. Fund your joke shop. Please buy Ron some new shit. Yes. It's just like, all I ask is that you buy Ron new dress robes. <laughs> It's like, charge him full price or extra at the shop. I don't care, but just get him new shit. It's just like, please stop making him dress like his Aunt Mildred or Millie or whatever her name was. <laughs> and thus smelling like her, too. Mm-hmm. They listen, we room together. Great Aunt Tessie, I think it was. Yeah. Smell like my great Aunt Tessie. How is Bellatrix related to Tonks? The, uh, Bellatrix is Tonks's aunt. Yes. Uh, what family does Winky the house elf belong to before working at Hogwarts? And she has a horrible time working at Hogwarts yeah. and being a free elf. Yeah, that uh, the politician, the Crouches, I believe. Yes, I felt so bad for Winky. Dobby's I like, I did you a good thing, and she's like, <laughs> I'm just like, I felt bad for her too. I'm like, bitch, just go fucking work at the school. If you don't want to get paid, don't get paid. Yeah. They, Dumbledore gave you the option of like, do you want to get paid or not? Yeah. And Dobby's like, I, did, I do. <laughs> I did feel bad for Winky. That wasn't fair to her. Poor thing. How old was a Sorcerer's Stone co-creator Nicholas Flamel when he decided to destroy it? 167. 367. 567. <laughs> 867? Lower. 767. Lower. 667. Close. 665. Oh, it's real close. <laughs> with, the, with the end part of it. I was going to be like, like one short of the devil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, hey. <laughs> I knew he was old. I didn't think he was, it was six. Once you said up, I'm like, well, yeah, duh, because Dumbledore like live to be a hundred and something and I'm like, well three hundred and something. I'm like, mm, wait a minute. <laughs> More than that? <laughs> Just like, okay. Oh, this I would not know. Monkshood and Wolfsbane are the same plant, also known as what? Monkshood and Wolfsbane Aconite. How? <laughs> I am deep in the world of supernatural books. Okay. What is the full name of Nearly Headless Nick? Sir Nicholas mm-hmm. Alexander Featherington. <laughs> you went Bridgerton. Because <laughs> we have the Featheringtons as a family. I've never even seen Bridgerton. And I know. I have no idea what the rest of his name is. Sir it Nicholas might- de Mimsy. Porpington. Yeah, never would have gotten that. <laughs> you gave me a Scrabble board, I could have thrown letters down and just gotten that combination before I would have thought of it. I will say, though, Headless Nick is in Monty Python. Is he? Okay. <laughs> if you, have you ever seen the clips of the Black Knight? Yeah, actually, I think I have. With all the limbs, you know, it's just a flesh wound. Mm. That's him! No, oh, I did not know that. I did That's learn him. something. <laughs> Okay. How many staircases does Hogwarts have? This is one of the answers that I got wrong on the cruise quiz. And we have had this question before on like something Multiple. else. We talk, yes. We have talked about this before. I don't remember. So I'm going to go with 111. <sighs> so close. 142. Okay. I think last time we didn't hit double, like, we didn't hit triple digits, and we were very surprised that it was a hundred and something. So I'm like, I'm just going to go with something stupid sounding. I think I had gone into triple digits, but I was, like, in the 400s. 
Yeah, that's fair. So like, there's a <laughs> four in there somewhere. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Oh my god. How many possible Quidditch fouls are there? Oh, it's a stupid amount. Um, I, I will, I'm going to ask this. Is it an even number? Like, is it a, like a yes. zero, zero, yes, zero yes. situation? Okay. 10,000. Oh, no. Less. 1,000. Less. 500? More. 700? Yes. 700 possible fouls in a game. I think it should be 10,000. <laughs> the game more interesting and... But there are no, like, that would be how many fouls there would be if they actually introduced safety regulations into Quidditch. But they don't. True. This is just without the safety regulations. In the Hall of Prophecy, there are rows and rows of glowing orbs. Which mm-hmm. row contains the prophecy about Harry and Voldemort? <laughs> is it a number or a name? It's a, it's a number. number. It's a number. It's a number. Double digits. 15. No. 52. <laughs> Closer to the three digits. 97. Yes. I was also going to say the same the same year the Philosopher's Stone was published. Yeah. I was just like, I was trying, I believe in the movie they show you the Roman numerals for it. And I was trying to think of what the Roman numerals were. were. I can't count the num- Roman numerals past like, I don't know, 30. I I know some of the ones that just denote like What's the, L? the solid number. L, I think L's a hundred yeah not really sure Dumbledore has a scar above his left knee that is a perfect map of what the London Underground for Harry's 17th birthday I was about to say 70th for Harry's (laughs) 17th birthday what color did Hermione turn the leaves of the Weasley's crab apple tree gold yes why I think because he had a golden snitch cake that year. So oh, okay. Cedric Diggory let Harry use the prefix bathroom in the Goblet of Fire. What man's statue is next to the lavatory entrance? I don't know. It I feel is. Like it's, I feel like it's hunchback something, but it might not be true. <laughs> it is Boris the Bewildered. Okay. All right. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, how do Hermione, Harry, and Ron find Crookshanks? That's so vague. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they followed him at one point. Like if they're asking if they figure out where he was going. Like if they where did they find him? Where did they find him? Again, so vague. The Whomping Willow is going to be my guess. Because they followed him through the Whomping Willow. I think it means when did, when did they actually like find him for the first time? Ron and Harry's room? No, apparently he jumps on Ron's head at the Magical Menagerie. Oh, like the very first time they met him. Okay. In the pet store. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. Like, I thought they were talking about, like, after Pettigrew, like, went missing. And, like, Ron was saying that Crookshanks ate him and they were looking for Crookshanks. Like, that was where my head, I was not thinking, like, you know, the place where Hermione bought him. Okay. 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 In the Quidditch World Cup, Ireland's team had three main chasers. Mullet, Troy, and Morin. Which one scored the first goal? Who would know that? <laughs> Mullet. I don't think that's correct. But... No, it is Troy. Yeah. Just like Mullet more on a Troy. <laughs> <laughs> what is the maximum speed of a firebolt broomstick? Too fast for children to be riding at 50 miles an hour? Double digits. See, I was correct the first time. <laughs> Too fast for children. <laughs> You said triple digits? 150 miles an hour. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's way too fast for children. <laughs> it doesn't even come with fucking seat belts or anti-crashing charms. Voldemort stole Helga Hufflepuff's cup from an old woman named Hepzibah Smith. What was the name of her house elf? <laughs> okay. Talk about using a footnote in the book. Um, (laughs) 
I'm going to go on a limb and say it was Winky. No. No. Daisy. No. It's a form of song. A children's game song. It involves limbs going in and out. I just want you to take a moment to reflect on that sentence. I know. But, like, it's part of the song. <laughs> yeah. Her house of penis. <laughs> He's a little bit looking at me. I think my dog is judging me. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit. <laughs> that is the face of judgment, okay? It is. It the really face is. Of absolute ju- She was sleeping and she woke up for that. And she's just like, absolutely not. Absolutely. No. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> we can just move on. It's hokey. Hokey? Hokey. Like you do the hokey pokey. Oh, hokey. Like hokey pokey. And I'm like, you I was. You put your right foot in and you put your right foot out. Like you said you put I thought you said oaky and I was just like, well, it is a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, Lord. Oh. Okay. Okay. Ginny bought a pet mm-hmm. pygmy puff from her older, her older brother's joke shop. What did mm-hmm. she name it? Why do I think it's something super uncreated like Puff? <laughs> it's a very simple name. Um, very common name. Think football shaped head or Terminator or a cousin Arnold? to. Yes. Like, I, you said football shaped head and I almost said Stewie Griffin. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And then you would immediately determine her, and I'm like, my brain had to pivot for a second, like <laughs> trying to connect Stewie Griffin and the Terminator. And I was like, what? Uh, da, 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 da. How many times did Gilderoy Lockhart win Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award? Seven. Five. I have no idea. Five. I'm just, I have no idea. I'm just going to keep going with seven because <laughs> the books like the number seven. So. That's fair. What was the name of the Quidditch team on the sock Mrs. Weasley tries to give to Harry? Uh, Going into the footnotes here. Okay, Ron's favorite team is the Chudley Cannons, and Jenny's is the Hollyhead Harpies, and Harry's is... Harry didn't know that Quidditch teams teams were a thing, apparently. I don't know. I have no idea what team is on there. It is the Puddlemere United. See, I, I've heard of them. I just, I don't know if that's Harry's team or not, so. It's on the sock that Weasley tried to give him. All right. What color is Teddy Lupin's hair when he is born? I believe it's brown like his dad. It's not blue. Because it's blue later, so. What color is, it... is your microphone? Hmm. I guess that makes sense because he is all the other members of the black family have black hair. So, yeah, yeah, it is a fan theory thing that I read that when Teddy's asleep and he were like not constant, consciously controlling what he looks like, he looks just like his dad, um, but he can never like, see it because that's like every Aww. yeah, but he can never see it because like when he wakes up, he just it's automatic that it starts changing, changing his body, and that's he learns to control that right because like obviously Tonks can control it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's to control it later. <laughs> Which scents attract Hermione Granger? Spearmint toothpaste, parchment, and freshly mowed grass. Yes. Who is the matron of the orphanage where Voldemort grows up? A bitch. <laughs> yes, but what is the bitch's name? Wigginbottom. Mm, no. I have no idea. Mrs. Cole. I like Wicked Bottom better. Yeah. What is the core of Draco's wand? A unicorn. Yes. What is the name of the orphanage where Riddle grew up? Wigan Bottom Orphanage. <laughs> you're you're close with the W, but it's not Wigan whatever. Windermere. A shorter name with a W. Willis. It's also a type of fabric. It comes Walmart. from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Wool. <laughs> Wool's orphanage. 
What is Lockhart's favorite color? Who fucking cares? <laughs> he doesn't remember. <laughs> is it? Oh, God. It's whatever color his eyes are, I think. Blue, green, something like that. Lilac. Lilac. Okay. It's words. Yeah. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, where were Harry, Hermione, and Ron coming from when they found Mrs. Norris petrified? This is specific to the books. The library? No. The Great Hall? No. No idea. Nearly Headless Nick's Death Day Party. Oh, yeah. I forget that's a thing. I yeah. just came across information that I was not aware of until now, um, which will be after this question. What is Lily Potter's birthday? May 5th. No, she's a she's a Aquarius. That doesn't help me at all. April 17th. No. I have no idea. January 30th, 1960. Okay. What is Snape's birthday? Who fucking cares day? Ouch. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he should not have been a teacher. No, I say ouch for a different reason. We share the same birthday. Okay, but then that means that you were the best person born on that day. <laughs> so. It's fair. I didn't know that you and Snape shared a birthday. I didn't either. Until now. <laughs> so I have Harry's birthday and you have Snape's, Snape's birthday. birthday. Okay. <laughs> All right. We learned something. And I am older than you. So. Fair. I'm pretty sure Snape's <laughs> older than both of us, though. Yes. Because Lily being, was born in 1960. That he's means also so in 1960. He's January 1960. Yeah. And they were literally the Marauders and my mom graduated the same year. Like, they all graduated in 1977. All right. That's how I remember when the Marauders graduated. Is because they graduated Hogwarts the same year my mom graduated high school. Who? It's kind of nice to put some of this random ass facts i have in my head to you <laughs> right i don't know who this is what does professor kettleburn wish to do after retiring from hogwarts kettleburn i believe is the history professor it's either that or he's the magical math professor what does he want to do after he grabbed her child? Oh, he's the professor of care of magical creatures. Oh, I don't know. Probably save what limbs he has left. Yes, that is actually the answer. <laughs> okay. And I love, is he in the... the I believe movie? he's only, in- I believe he's only in the background of the movies and like, in the beginning, like when everybody's sitting at the tables at the Great Hall, I think he's up there. Well, the I have scene. a picture of him, but I don't know if it's... Oh, never mind. It's just something else I read. Okay, because they have a picture of him as like an animated thing. Mm-hmm. But then they also have a picture of Billy Connolly next to him. And I'm like, Did, was this actor in the, the movies we don't talk about? <laughs> yeah, I guess. That's but it just, but the, the caption just says, who else immediately read Professor Kettleburn's voice as Billy Connolly? So, okay, that's fine. What does Hermione say Jupiter's largest moon is? Titan? No, Ganymede. Okay. Yeah. Is that Jupiter's largest moon? I think it's... I mean, it's Hermione knows everything. It is. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't name any of Jupiter's moons except for Titan, and I'm like... <laughs> Okay. Let's just go with Titan. When did Harry learn Accio? What year? Fourth. Yes. What? Why? Not what. Why did Hermione miss the lesson on cheering charms? God, I don't even remember what book that was in. I'm going to assume it was in the third book and it was because of her time turner bullshit. No. Draco's cruel behavior led her to miss the class. What book is that? It could be any book. I don't know. What is I like how they they just taught the kids. It's like, here's the Xanax jar. The Xanax jar. (laughs) Holy shit. Jupiter has 95 moons. Yeah, it has a lot. Okay. What is Ron's middle name? 
Phileas. Yes. Ronald Phileas Weasley. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, in the Weasley's magical clock, what are all of the hands pointed to when Harry arrives at the burrow? Home. Trouble? Close. Mortal peril. Mortal peril. Which sounds about right. What does Ginny say that Ron has a tattoo of? What does Ginny say that Ron has a tattoo? When the fuck <laughs> did Ron get tattoos? I don't think I'm he ever s- did, but... the fuck does Ron Weasley get a tattoo? I don't think he ever does, but I think Ginny just tries to fuck with her parents. I don't know. Or get Ron in trouble. Who knows? Yeah, he definitely never actually got a tattoo. That's for sure. And I... I know it's a, supposed to, like, Jenny spread the rumors that it's a pygmy puff, but I can't really count that because I Googled it because I was so enraged because I'm like, there's no way he has an actual fucking tattoo. Like, what kind of fan and bullshit is this? It's like, no, it was the rumor that she spread that he had a pygmy puff tattoo somewhere inappropriate. Yes, pygmy puff. Uh, that's, we already said that. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, where is the secret passage from Hogwarts to Honeydukes hidden? I think it's behind one of the statues that goes underneath and then appears under the floors of Honeydukes. Yes, but which statue? Humphrey the Hunchback? I don't know. No, that would be the One-Eyed Witch. Okay. Who is the second Peveril brother? Igneous? Ignatius? Do they all start with eyes? No. I have no idea. Cadmus Peveril. Yeah, because I totally would have guessed that. Right? <laughs> who is the Hogwarts student who, who cursed herself to get rid of her acne? Oh, I hope it's Lavender Brown. It is not Lavender Brown. Is it one of the Patels? No, it is not one of the Patels. Mm, pansy? No. I have no idea. Eloise Midgen. Yeah, no, I've never heard of her. Uh, bu- 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 bu. You said that already. What is Hermione's middle name? Jean. Yes. Who is the cat-like magical creature with the tail of a lion? The Sphinx? No. Sounds like a Pokemon, though. <clears throat> what is it? A measle. Oh, Okay. It's not how I'd have, I would have described them, but sure. What's the tail of a lion? All right. You can find them in Hogwarts Legacy. It's going to find them now. Uh, what is Dumbledore's favorite flavor of jam? I don't know, but I can tell you his favorite Birdie Box flavor. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, one he hasn't had before. Sorry. Favorite flavor of jam? Orange? I have no idea. Raspberry. Raspberry. Okay. All right, let's do two more questions and we'll wrap it up. Okay. What is Dumbledore's favorite muggle sweet? Sherbet lemons. Lemon drops. All right. All right, I'm going to give you the worst thing to end on. All right? Okay, gosh. (laughs) (laughs) How many nuts are in a sickle? Ten. No. Seven. No. No idea. 29. Fine, one more. What are Dumbledore's middle names? In order. Alf, Albus, Wolfric, Brian, Percival? Oh, you're so easy. You got them all right, but in the wrong order. Albus, Brian, Percival, Wolfric, no. Albus, Wolfric, no, Alvis, Percival. Alvis, Brian, Percival, Wolfric, Dumbledore? No. Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore. Ah. Keep the stupid name for them <laughs> for last. So, except for like the last five questions, I thought I did pretty well. Uh, kind of bombed the last few questions, but you know, there's, there's, it's nice to use my weird Harry Potter trivia knowledge for something, so. It's like I know Aconite and all that, and I don't know. Yeah, I would not have come up with that. 
Yeah, a lot of lot of supernatural books that I've read. I mean, I know all kinds of weird theories about the Knot family, like Theodore's family, and like all kinds of shit. And it's just nice to use some of it. So thank you guys so, so much for joining me on my birthday to listen to both book theories and Harry Potter trivia. So, yeah. Happy birthday to you and to Harry. Thank you. And to Harry as well, not to J.K. Rowling. No, fuck her. Yeah. So, just to me and Harry, so. <laughs> but, so, yeah, it was fun, and I'm glad I got to do this. I like doing our birthday episodes. It's always a lot of fun. But so we will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tune in next week for more fuckery, because we have some serious questions and concerns. <laughs>